All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in Luke chapter 24 today, guys. So we're going to wrap up Luke today. I hope you guys have enjoyed walking through God's Word with me. It's been so awesome to get to share with you guys. I mean, we're coming up on like nine, ten months I've been doing this, guys, and it has been so rewarding, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Anyways, let me shut up. Let's get into some prayer, and let's finish up the Physician's Gospel. Lord Jesus, I want to come before you today, Lord, humble, thankful, gracious, hungry, devoted, and all of that is because of your saving grace and the Holy Spirit's leadings, Lord. Thank you for that, Father God. Thank you for preserving me and my family and our health and pulling us through whatever difficulties that we may face, Lord, providing us with with the hearts that can love like only hearts that you are in can love, Lord. I ask, Father God, that this video be able to reach out, touch its audience, and to really do something for you, Father God, to pull people in, to liven people up, to, to renew and rejuvenate and revive. In your holy name, I pray, guys. Father God is so good. Somebody out there, shout amen. Let's jump up into this, guys. Luke 24. <clears throat> Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, and certain other women with them, came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, and their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Now behold, Two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emau, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed in reason, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he spoke to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would, not, would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, 
blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen, guys. All right, man. You guys, I don't know if you guys know this or not. Well, I mean, you probably do if you've been with me the whole time. But if you have walked through all this word with me, then we have walked through all four Gospels, guys, and the book of Acts. How beautiful is that? And so many other wondrous, wondrous books, too, guys. I can't thank you guys enough for really letting me share all of this with you, man. God's word is so amazing. Let's get into it, guys. Thanks for joining me for this 24th chapter in the culmination of the physician's gospel. Here we are reminded of how Jesus is the culmination of all that has happened before him. It's worth noting that none of the gospels contain every resurrection appearance. Each author evangelizes to their purposeful crowd. We find Luke hits on the very factual nature of Christ's resurrection, the fact that it was real and it happened. And he also highlights the dramatic, powerful, transformative effect that it made on the disciples' very lives. 24-2 But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Glory and power un match. The tomb was empty, guys. This is a foundational truth for the gospel, its reach, its impact, and its message. To be clear, the stone was rolled away for us. It was rolled away for the express purpose of making the tomb's emptiness clear. The Lord did not need the stone removed to complete his task. 24, 6, and 7. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Okay, guys, so human nature is a funny thing. We have a real tendency to see and hear what we want. Our perceptions become our realities. Here, the angels remind the women that Jesus had been clear. He had told all his followers that he must suffer, he must die, and he must be raised on the third day. It's hard to say what they perceived such declarations to mean to themselves at that time, 
But what's clear is that this was God's will. This was Father God's sovereign plan. It had been pronounced throughout the Old Testament, and its fruition was at hand. 24, 10 through 12, guys. <clears throat> It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. All right, guys, so I'm not going to, I didn't write about this, but I just realized this, and I want to share with you guys about the fact that he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves. So some people... Roman, Roman people, Jewish people of the time might have suggested that his body was gone because it had been moved, right? Why would they have took his clothes off? His clothes were there because he had been supernaturally moved. Alright guys, so the Gospels don't tell us a lot about Mary Magdalene. And society at the time had a very low opinion of women. We've talked about this often. And how Christ did a very different thing with how he approached them. Nonetheless, Christ doesn't appear first to Caesar, he doesn't appear to high society, he doesn't appear to Herod, he doesn't even appear to the apostles. But he appears to this devoted woman with a dark, troubled past, a woman who had been demon-possessed and was now free and liberated and living a life worth living by way of Jesus. Mary was a picture of the humble and poor in spirit. A, a church elder many years ago had been known to say that she was the apostle for the apostles. Now, an apostle is a sent one. So what he is saying was that she was the sent one to the sent ones. Or in other words, God sent Mary to pronounce the Lord's resurrection to them. 24 verses 25 and 26, guys. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So, all of God's word is true. All of God's word is important. Here Jesus rebukes these followers, pushing them and us to see how crucial all scripture is. They thought that the Lord should be a ruling king. And the Bible presents him like that at times. But also as a suffering servant. See, we must respect and believe all of God's word. Every last jot and tittle. Alright guys, 24 verses 28 and 29. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Alright guys, so... Here, in a sense, these men model for us what the born-again process is. Here, they draw close to their nest destination. But before letting the Lord go, they, they, they ask him to stay. He's meek, and he won't force his way into their homes. No, he waits until invited in, and then, he then becomes a key and crucial part of their lives. 2432, guys. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? We can't ignore that burning when we feel it. This is a powerful description of what it's like when we truly recognize and have Christ within us. To be under the wing of the divine is a feeling that is basically impossible to describe, but it is wonderful beyond compare. 2439, guys. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. His hands and feet, or in other words, his crucif crucifixion wounds are still visible, though he is in his glorious risen form. These scars aided in bringing some to a deeper belief and a more true comprehension. Let's go on to check out 24 verses 42 and 43. It's similar. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. So this is kind of like the wounds. This is another means of proof, of verification. The Messiah, now risen, eats 
He drinks, making it obvious and clear that he is not just some apparition or hallucination. 24 verses 45. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. The disciples had spent much time with Christ. They had heard him preach God's word. They had saw miracles performed. They had heard his prophecies. They had saw him crucified. And now before them he was risen. Still, it was not until the Lord opened their minds to understand that they were able to truly grasp it all. This is a clear illustration of a powerful truth. God and God alone, the Holy Spirit too, can enable this true understanding. It comes by the divine or it does not come. We can't will it. 2449, guys. <clears throat> Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So the risen Savior will make good on God's promise, the Holy Spirit, a gift so amazing that they are to tarry, to hold off on their mission until it is received. We are so blessed with the Holy Spirit and all that is enabled by its indwelling of us. All right, guys, 2453, last one I'm going to share with you today. Last one I'm going to share with you out of Luke, <clears throat> at least for a while. And we're continually, you know what, let's read 52 and 53. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Full circle, Luke's powerful gospel message regarding the Messiah ends like it began in Jerusalem, and with the worship of God. How beautiful, guys. All right, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button and drop a new video like this six days a week. God wants us to hear it, read it, talk it, eat it, breathe it, sing it, scream it. Guys, let's do it together. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to share it, man, my heart goes out to you for that, guys. Um, That's all I want, man, to take God's word to everyone, man. This world is lost. It is fallen. And it needs the Lord, because that's the only thing that will get us to where we need to go, guys. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, drop those down here into the comment section. Um, man, whatever you do, go out there and have a blessed day, guys. I love you so much. Father God loves you so much more.